Today, we're going to be taking a look at the four key components to a good driven backhand slice. A lot of people struggle with having this bite or this knife where the ball travels low like a dart and they end up hitting a floater which kind of just sits in the middle of the court. So we're going to look at what every good tennis player must do in order to hit an effective backhand slice. Let's begin. Step number one, the backhand slice power position. Let's get our racket parallel to the baseline. Okay, we want our string bed basically pointing towards the back fence and the net. This is going to mean that we make a full coil with the shoulders, keeping our non-hitting hand on the throat of the racket in order to have a full turn. Okay, the racket should be laid back over the non-hitting shoulder and our front shoulder should be underneath our chin if we want to actually get power on this shot. Now, step number two is the bent elbow hitting structure in the shoulder turn. Notice how I didn't just take my arm straight back, which is what a lot of people do. You'll notice that all the pro players start the slice with a bent arm because we're gonna be releasing from the shoulder and swinging the arm as an entire unit and straightening it out later in the swing, which is gonna result for most of the racket head speed that we generate on this shot. So what you wanna make sure is that you have this leather L for leverage, right? There's a 90 degree angle here, or we could say it's a letter U, okay? Or we're creating kind of a box with our arm and the racket handle. Now, you're not gonna have this position if your wrist isn't up and fixed. You don't wanna have it down and loose. You actually wanna have it up like this in this letter L position. So the wrist should also be up and fixed and that will automatically create this box with your arm, okay? The letter U. Now, step number three. The release is high to low towards the contact point. Now, this is probably the most crucial part of a successful backhand slice, and that is the contact point in relation to your body. We actually want to have what I call a late contact point on the backhand slice. On a topspin backhand, whether it's one-handed or two-handed, the contact point will be a considerable distance away from the body in front of the front leg. There will be a huge gap here. But on the slice, you actually want your contact point to be more compact and close to your body. And you should actually be taking the ball once it's in line with your front foot. And you will see that this is really the only way to drive the ball. If you take it too out in front, you'll basically end up kind of scraping it and delivering a glancing blow. Most of our power in our hitting zone is gonna come from the point when we first go from bent to straight. It's this motion right here and you could even take the ball slightly behind you so you can see that this is where all this power and force is going to be generated on the slice. So it's actually a good thing to have a late contact point. Step number four is the follow through. A lot of people end up floating the slice because they just go from high to low and they stop their racket here. If you want to drive the ball and knife it, your follow through actually needs to come more down and across. And instead of high to low, the swing is really just from left to right. Now, as we do this, we wanna focus on what the non-hitting arm is doing from this position right here. When we let go, we don't just want it to do nothing and we don't wanna open up on the slice. If we fire the arms at the same time, we synchronize them, into what I call spreading the wings, it's a lot easier to 
come down and across from left to right. And it'll also help you stay sideways and add more racket head speed and power to your slice as well. So you don't want to forget about this side and you want to use it to stay sideways and also stay on balance. Here's a quick drill that you can do to practice your backhand slice. Get your body sideways parallel with the net. Make a full turn and you're going to go across the net strap and then come down and spread the wings. In full speed, it's going to look like this. Okay. The reason a lot of people float the backhand slice is because they stop the racket on the side of the body and then they actually come up, right? They kind of cup the ball. If you want to knife it and drive it, you've got to come through and across. And the swing has really got to come left to right. But you got to remember that the body has to stay sideways in order for this to work. So we're going to practice keeping our chest pointing towards the net strap the entire time and also utilizing the non-hitting hand so that we can stay sideways and add a little bit more speed. That's all you have to do. In any event, thanks for tuning into the clinic and use what you've learned to modernize your game. Ciao.